Good evening. We are going to be finishing up the book of James tonight. Uh, I'll be honest, not sure where we're going next, but you'll find out next week. Uh, again, we're going to be finishing up the book of James. Uh, this has been a, a great study. I have really enjoyed going through the book of James again. It's It's been a while since I've taught from the book of James. Um, and it's really just great to go through and, and get back to some of how to live out our Christian walk. Uh, so we're going to be finishing up James, James chapter 5, starting in verse 13. Here is what James has to say. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently so that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruits. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is a section on prayer. James talks about how important prayer is in a, in a lot of different ways. He starts with, if anyone is suffering, let him pray. There are a lot of people suffering right now. Physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, there's lots of suffering going on in our world. And not just the world as a whole, but our country, our state, our local community. There are lots of people who are suffering. He says, let them pray. We should all be praying. We're all suffering in one way or another. There's suffering going on. We should be praying for ourselves. I'm going to jump forward to verse 16. He then says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. We shouldn't just be praying for ourselves, although that is very important for us to pray for ourselves. But we should also be praying for each other. And this is something that we find echoed in scripture a lot. The idea of praying for each other. Paul says, bear one another's burdens. In many ways, he's talking there also in pray for one another. But prayer, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because as you go through scripture and you think about the times that prayer is mentioned in scripture, there's just some interesting things in there. Maybe one of the more famous verses from the Sermon on the Mount, we looked at that oh, a few months ago where Jesus talks about prayer. When you are praying, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And I've probably missed some in there because I haven't actually looked at that in a long time. But you know, the Lord's Prayer, this is how you should pray. And obviously it's not just a cookie cutter you know, this, this is your prayer every time. Of course that's not right. And we think about prayer and a lot of times I remember growing up um, in church, especially when I was really young. And we would sing this song. I, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. And bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped 
the tempter snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer if you were anything like me you sang that song and you dreaded what was going to happen after that song was sung because every time without fail that song is sung and you're waiting who's going to get up and say the prayer because you have to say a prayer after that song right you have to i mean it's like wrong if you don't and so you wait and you see okay who's getting up to pray and without fail almost every time it was that one gentleman in the congregation who seemed like they prayed for an entire hour right um obviously a little, little bit of humor hopefully uh but is that prayer i mean obviously it is but is that what james is talking about sweet hour of prayer and by the way when you look through the lyrics of this song it's a beautiful message about how important prayer is and how it lifts us up and how in many ways prayer heals us and i think growing up in a christian family probably the prayers were most familiar with are prayers before meals especially if your family sat down together and if you grew up in anything like my family, it was always the same prayer. And if you ask my wife and children, they'll say you, they'll tell you that I basically say the same prayer before every meal. Is that what James is talking about? Of course not. You see, because a lot of times these prayers, whether they're in our worship services or if they're the prayers that we say before meals, they become almost rote memory. We get up, we know what we're going to say. And in fact, you as people in the congregation or you as people sitting around the table probably know what is going to be said before someone gets up to say the prayer. This is not the prayer that James is talking about. James is talking about a very personal prayer, an intimate prayer. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. This is that prayer of, I need you, Lord. I need you. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your healing. I need your comfort. I need your peace. This, in a lot of ways, is what Paul is talking about when he says, pray without ceasing. And you hear that and you think, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to pray without ceasing? And then there's a lot of places that you can go with that, but I think the main place where I go with that, the main thought I take away from pray without ceasing is the idea that there's always an inner dialogue going on between you and God. Something amazing happens and you just go, God, thank you so much. For that experience thank you for allowing me to witness that whatever it is great show of compassion great show of love and it's the prayer of oh lord please help me right now i'm struggling and it's lord please be with that person who i just saw be injured and it's that I've got a lot of stuff on my plate today, God. I'm going to need your help. Help me get through this. Give me courage. Give me strength. Give me wisdom to get through the things I have to do today. You see, this is the prayer that is our relationship with God. This is us talking to God. It's, it's casting our worries before him. It's casting all of our troubles at his feet and saying, Lord, I need your help. It's an ongoing prayer. It's an ongoing conversation that we have with God. Pray without ceasing. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. 
The prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. If he is if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. The idea of going to the elders of the church, the men responsible for the spiritual well-being of the church. Have you thought about that? How often do we as members of the church go to the elders and say, I need you to pray for me for this? And here James uses sickness. But I don't think that's the only, re the only time that we should go to the elders and say, I need you to pray for me. And you may sit here and say, well, it says, have them come and pray over him, anointing him with oil. You may say, well, right now we shouldn't be doing that. And, and we'll set that argument aside for right now. Do you have to be in the presence of someone to pray for them? You see, our elders do not have to be in your home to pray for you. It's this crazy idea. The elders, one of their responsibilities is the spiritual well-being of you. Spiritual well-being of me. That is one of their responsibilities as elders. Why do we not go to them and ask them to pray for us as often as we should? Something to think about. And James continues, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. You see, don't just go to the elders when you need prayer. Obviously, go to them. Ask the elders specifically, I need you to pray for me. But James doesn't stop there. He says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. And the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Who is righteous? <laughs> prayer of a righteous person. Who is righteous? If you go back to the book of Hebrews, do you know what the writer of Hebrews would say? We are all righteous. If the blood of Christ is covering us. In fact, the writer of Hebrews goes one step further. He doesn't just call us righteous. He says that for those of us who have been covered in the blood of Christ, we are perfect. That's what the writer of Hebrews says. Because the blood of Christ perfects us. We are righteous in the eyes of God. Not because of any good thing that we have done, but because of the good things that God has done. We are not righteous because we deserve to be righteous. We are not righteous because our actions have given us the right to say we're righteous. We are righteous because God has declared us as righteous. And our prayer, our prayers are powerful. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. I'm also reminded of what Jesus says about someone who has faith the size of a mustard seed, that it can move mountains. Prayer is powerful, not again, not because of us, but because of the God who gives us that power. Our prayers can change people's lives because God listens, because God cares. We, as Christians in this crazy world, we have a responsibility to be praying for ourselves, for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for those who are outside of Christ, for our neighbors, for those who have never heard of Christ. We have a responsibility to pray. And 
The very last thing that James says is we also have the responsibility of those who have walked away from the faith. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. You see, when we go to our brother or sister who has walked away from Christ and we bring them back, not by our works, not because we preached the best sermon, not because we used fancy words, but because of our example. If we bring our brother back, we save them from death. We have a responsibility to pray for those who are in need. We have a responsibility also to continue relationship with those who walk away from Christ and to be an example for them. You see, what most of the book of James is about is how to live out our Christian faith, to be an example to those around us. Because if, if we're going to be honest, we can say all the right things. But if we're not doing the right things, we'll never win anyone to Christ. You see, our actions speak louder than words. This is something that we ingrain in our children from a young age. Your actions speak louder than words. But we need to live it out too. We can't just preach a good message. We have to live a good message as well. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that you love us. And God, thank you that you sent Jesus to be an example to us. And God, we pray that in all things we can learn from his example and that we can be an example to others. We ask that you give us the strength to pray, not just for ourselves and not just for our brothers and sisters in Christ, but that we pray for everyone because people are hurting and they need you. And we pray that you will use us as your tool, as your instrument to show them your love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.